All right, welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us today. We are doing Creating Your Financial Foundation Part 2. We're going to be talking about debt and credit today. And so this is a conversation, so if you have questions, feel free to, uh, to you know, raise your hand, um, join in, and just ask us as we go along, okay? All right, let's go to the second one. Perfect. All right. So debt. Is debt good or bad? No? Yes? So I know a lot of people feel overwhelmed with debt. Um, I don't think debt is bad as long as you can manage it. What do you think? Yes, I agree. Uh, we need We need it but we can't control it. Yeah. And you can't have a credit without debt. So they That's go true. they go hand in hand. That's true. Okay. So a lot of people feel overwhelmed with That's debt. True. Yeah, thank you. There we go. And this is where they start to feel overwhelmed. They don't know... Um, what their total debt is, how much interest is um, for each credit card or even on their car loan. Um, they don't know what utilization is with their credit cards. So, and they get, um, when I say overwhelmed, they get to where they just don't deal with it. They, they don't want to know anything about it. Yeah, um, they just forgot about everything. They, they don't want to change anything. They don't want to change, yeah. So for me personally, I was... 33 or so, and I was overwhelmed and I was tired of it. I was fed up with it. We had, you know, a payment to the hospital, two car payments, a student loan payment, a house payment. And it, I, it was all just, it was, there was money coming in. I didn't know where it was all going because there wasn't money to do anything fun. Um, and I decided I was done. And so I took control and I, I, I figured out what all of my debts were and I started paying them off one by one. Yeah. That can happen. Um, I really never had debt, um, but I have to control my money. I have to be careful with my money a lot. You have to be intentional. Yes. I, I made that decision time ago. Yes. And a lot of people I don't think are intentional with their money. No. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them just doesn't know how to do it. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And this is something that we work on with clients. Um, we, we talk about, you know, we review credit reports and we talk about all the debts and what the interest is. Um, and we'll get into that here in just a second, but we tackle this, this mountain of debt with you. And I think having someone, uh, go on the journey with you, it helps a lot. You don't feel so overwhelmed. You don't feel alone. Um, and someone to celebrate with when you start reaching those goals. Yes. Yeah. That, that's great when you have someone to talk about things and because sometimes or most of the times the people that is not in the problem can think different ways to um, do things. Mm -hmm. So you will have a, a advice, a good advice. A different perspective. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. So the stages of change is something that was developed by a Dr. Prochaska. And a de Clemente, I don't think I'm saying those names right, but um, you can Google stage of change and kind of take a, take a look at it. It came out um, in 1983, but it pertained to smoking. And it was all about people that were smoking, that they were trying to stop, they had quit. Um, but it actually is um, can be applied to anything in our life, whether it's I want to lose weight, I want to save money, I want to take care of my debt. Um, and these kind of speak for themselves, but you have to know where you are in this stage of change when it comes to what your financial goals are. It, it's one of those tools that we use to figure out how we can help you best. And But you need to know where you are with that. The, the first one is the pre-contemplation. I want, can do it. We are in, we negate, or we, we don't want to know anything about it. Mm -hmm. Over debt. Yeah. 
the next one is contemplation. I may do it, I may not. It depends on my mood. Preparation is when you change your mind, when your mindset is different and you just do it. I will do it. Action is uh, the process when you're doing things to change things. And you continue to do it and you make the choice to don't be in debt anymore or mm -hmm. control your debt. Mm -hmm. So we talked about money mindset um, on during part one, but your money mindset really matters on how you feel and then also your stage of change. So my mindset can be, I want to build a savings account. So my stage of change is the action where this guy's running. He's actively moving. I'm actively saving. So I have to know my numbers. How much can I realistically save? If my mindset is I'm overwhelmed, I'm not going to do anything about my debt then the guy's not going to be running anymore. He's going to be sitting on the bench because he's not actively doing anything about it. So they are two different things. So you need to know how do you think and feel about your debt or your credit? What are you, where are you at in the stage of change? Where do you want to, to go with it? What are, you, what are you willing to do to change your behaviors? And then you have to know your numbers. And this is not an overnight, it's not an over, it, it's a journey. It doesn't happen overnight. It's not like it this miracle. Time. It takes time. Yeah. Takes Thank time. you. Yeah. So this is the sheet um, that I use when I'm working with clients and knowing who do you owe, um, the credit cards, their names, the car, the mortgage, um, any, any debt that you may have, then your credit limit, you need to know what your credit limit is on your credit cards, how much you owe what your monthly payment is. And this is just the minimum, not what you may be, even if you're paying extra, just what's your monthly minimum payment, what your interest rate is. Um, it's always good to go back and look at your credit card statement to see how much did you pay in interest? Because if it's if your interest is $30 every month or 45, um, depending on, the, on your debt, what your interest rate is, you're just taking money and throwing it out the window. Yep. Um, I always like to have a goal date so that I'm working towards something. And I like to take notes. Um, if you are if you are actively struggling, this is this is the starting point. So this is an example of someone who's got some credit cards and a car. So we know what their limit is. We know what the balance owed is for each item, and then we've got that monthly payment. So this is the minimum, and this is what the interest rate would be. So this shows that your interest that was paid for the previous month. With this, if you look, $69 is what is being paid in total interest. Until people sit down and look at their numbers, they don't necessarily realize how much it is when you until you add it all up. Yeah. Um, and then you decide what you're gonna tackle. Yep. Well, you're gonna, yeah, you make your choice. You make the choice. Yeah. Yeah. And I think with, with that, yeah. What would you do? <laughs> <laughs> I will go for uh, 500. Credit card, 500 credit limit, um, $150 left. You would pay 80, that. I would, you would pay have that the, up. You'd have the, that okay. will be the first one. And then... 350. Okay. And then the third card in my okay. car, I think. And then the car. Yeah. Yes. So I would do something a little bit different. Yeah. Because I would find out what the goal of the client is. Because if they're not closing the cards and they plan to, to use them, but this is hurting their score because of utilization, I would attack the 315 balance owed first. Right. And I would say, let's get that down to a hundred because the credit card limit with the 500 or the, the credit card with the $500 limit is already at a low utilization. Yes. But it depends on if they're trying to build their score or just mm -hmm. pay down debt. Um, so there, there are different ways to look at it. But if it was me paying my debt, I will do that. That's what you would do. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And start, um, it would definitely be one of the first two because those are um, attainable. There's something mm -hmm. quick. 
where that car, that car is going to take a little bit of time. And, and that will change my mindset. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. As, yes. as you're going and you're paying stuff off, I mean, you mm -hmm. get excited about it. That's the reason because oh, I yeah. picked those two. Yeah. Um, money owed to a bank is something um, that has been closed, but it's not been sent to collection yet, mm -hmm. but it's still money that's owed and they can come back and see you for that money. Um, so it is something that you can negotiate with um, to try and not have to pay the full balance, but you want to get that taken care of so that it is removed from your credit report. Yes. Yeah. What's next? Up in account and collections. Yeah. Talking about credit report. So for open accounts, I would start contacting all of my credit card companies credit card. and I would say, can you help me out? I'm having a little bit of a struggle right now. Um, I've had different clients where they were put in for six months. They had like 6% interest, 5% interest, um, maybe 12 months, just some kind of um, set payment to help them get started on it. Um, but starting with that is probably the best thing. The second is moving on to the collections. And again, mm -hmm. this takes time. It takes time. For every collector that you call, it takes at least an hour. Ooh. Yeah, it, it <laughs> takes time. But you want to verify, hey, is this my debt? Can you prove it's my debt? Um, they can they can email you right there. They can show you your your signature and okay, this is my debt. This is this is the date I signed it. Um, are you the person I can negotiate with? Yeah. So the first thing is um, they have to prove that is your debt, mm -hmm. and then you can negotiate with them. Yes, and, and they will they will negotiate with you. So I had two people. Um, one called and the lady just would not do anything less than twenty five percent. And so she, she took it because she wanted to get it taken care of. I had another lady um, client and I always tell clients, tell them, Hey, will you accept 30%? Always already know what your number is. Um, I don't do math in my head, but let's just say the collection was 600 and you offered them $200 and they say, no, we won't accept that. Okay. That's great. Thank you for your time. I've got a list of people I'm going to Put you at the bottom of my list. Put on my list. Yeah. I'll get back to you when I've got some more money. You have a great day. And she did that. And they were like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. And they they took her. They agreed. They, they, yes. agreed. they took her offer. She's like, that really worked. So, um, and if you have to hang up and go to the next person, do You're that. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you'll get back to them. Because the collection will be there. Right. Right. It's in there and it will be there. Right. And... We go to the next part. So this is where your debt is reported. Mm -hmm. This is where that credit report comes in handy. So if I have a low credit score, am I a bad person? No. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> You're not a bad person. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> you just have to take care of your money. You have to manage your debt. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. But you're not a bad person. Yeah. And the Vantage scores, those those are not FICO. A lender is going to pull your FICO score. Yes. And that's what they're going to base your um, your loan off of. What makes up the FICO score? So payment history is the number one thing. So even if you can only make the minimum payment, you have to pay it on time every month. You have to make a minimum payment on time every month. Mm -hmm. That is hard for people. It is hard. They forget. <laughs> oh, I forgot. Okay, we've got calendars and timers. Um, what is it going to take to help you remember on time payment? That That is number one. The second is that utilization. So if you have a credit card with a limit of $1,000, you don't want to spend more than $333 at any one time because the credit bureau reports every month or the credit card reports every month to the credit bureau, sorry. So you can spend a thousand dollars on Monday and on Tuesday they can report to the credit bureau. And then on Wednesday you can pay it off, but it's too late. You've already spent that thousand dollars and they reported it. Mm -hmm. So you're at hundred percent utilization. So that hurts your score. So you want to keep that under the 33%. Yes. Link the credit history. <laughs> okay. 
length of credit history is um, having that credit card and not closing it. Only use it one time a month. I tell everybody, mm -hmm. use it for gas, pay it off. Use it for gas, pay it off. Because when you close that score, when you close the credit card, it doesn't go into your score anymore. So it stays on your report, but it's not helping you. It's not helping you. So you don't, you don't want to close it unless closing it is better in the long run for you. Yes. It depends on your situation. Mm -hmm. it, it, it depends on your situation where you are. Credit mix. It's always uh, good to have different lines of credit. Mm -hmm. Any of credit. Um, it's good, but it doesn't have a lot of impact in your score. Yeah. And you don't want a ton. Every time you go, um, like what, to the mall or when they say, do you want... Um, do you want 10% off by applying for our credit card? No. No. Thank you. I had a okay, client. No, thank you. <laughs> I had a client that um, asked for a new credit card to pay another one. So by now she has around 28 credit cards that she's not using. Ooh. And I was like, wow. Ooh. Yeah, that scares me. That scares me, dude. That's, all. That's a lot of credit a lot. Because they have all this account open, but she doesn't use anything. So at one point, it will be really bad for her. Yeah. Now, I will say, if you have a credit card and you've had it for a while and you are making on-time payments, but it's high. So say you, your credit limit is 1000 and you've mm -hmm. got like $900 on there, but you've had it for a couple of years and you make on-time payments, mm -hmm. you're doing really well. I would call them and say, hey, can you increase my increase utilization my a little bit? Or the credit limit a little bit because it'll help with utilization. Yeah, but if yeah. you if you're good with payments, they will offer you. More they money. will offer you. They will, yes, they they always yes. do that. How do I build my credit? On time every month. On time every month. <laughs> that's that's number one. Payments on time every month. Yeah. The second is the utilization. So you can see in this bar graph <laughs> where. The first one, they're over with their um, utilization. And with the second one, they're under mm -hmm. based on how much they spent. So that's that's just kind of a visual on how that looks. And then length of time. Don't don't close it. Keep it open. Yes. Yeah. No. Time is important. Mm -hmm. Pros and cons of credit builder cards. Uh, um, everyone's going to have something different. Every bank is going to have something different. Um read the fine print, know what your late fees are, um, know if you can go negative, know what your annual fees are for any mm -hmm. kind of card. Any card. Yeah. Ask, you, ha you have the right to ask as many questions as you want in in the bank or whatever you're going to get your, your card. Mm -hmm. You have the right to ask mm -hmm. and read. It's really important to read. Yeah, yeah. And knowing what happens, I know, mm -hmm. um, like with the self card, you put so much money into it because you've taken out this loan. But at the end of the loan, you don't really get that back. It mm -hmm. goes into a credit card, and it can it can be really tricky. Even I mean, like we work with this stuff, and I'm like, I'm not sure I like the self card. It, it you really have to know what you're doing and be on the ins and outs of it. Yes, you have to be careful. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, what questions do you have? Are there any questions? Yes. How do you see if there are questions? I'm technologically challenged. I mean, they can unmute and you just ask. Or oh, yeah. Unmute. Chat. Unmute. Turn your camera on. Um, do you, Octavia, so do you? Oh, yeah. You can put it in the chat. Yes. She asked, do you, but I think it's... Yeah, we, we didn't get a complete question. Miss mm -hmm. Reed. Oh, you can read it. Oh, what is that? Is that the same thing? Oh, now there's two chats. How can I get the forms you showed? Um... I don't know. You can come meet with me. That's it. 
come with yeah, us. Yeah, come meet or... with us. Um, in person is so much um, easier and better. Um, and you, you can, I mean, we can mm-hmm. mail it. I can, yeah, I mean, I can email it, mm-hmm. right? Like, yeah, I can email yeah. it to you. If the only yeah. thing that you want the fo- is the form, yeah, we can. We can try. I think it's a lot of writing. Okay. That's okay, because it's going to be on the website tomorrow. So you can go to the maryrig.org website and you can and play it and watch us repeatedly <laughs> on time payments every month. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that. That's okay. I'll be okay. That's okay. <laughs> we don't have to watch ourselves. Can so make an appointment? Okay. Yes. Yes. Yep. You can make an appointment anytime. You didn't. We didn't do that. Oh, information this time. Oh, yeah, our information. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how to do it now. But mm-hmm. it'll be, so you'll have our emails um, because I sent out the right link. Here. So you've got my email. Um, oh, yeah. Do you know your number? Yeah, it's right there. 463-900. Oh. Um, 463-900. Uh-huh. Four seven three seven. We're happy to meet with you. Um, can do the forms. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Any- talk about money. Yep. Money mindset, credit, savings, budget, anything you need about money. Because <laughs> we're money coaches. That's what we do. And we're free. So that's always good. Yeah, we don't charge. Our services are free. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, guys. Have a great evening. Thank you. It's in the Zoom thingy, my barber. There's an end all thingy. (laughs) We're stuck on Zoom forever.